Hey, everybody. Happy Friday. Michael, are you excited that it's Friday? Yay! Yay! Woo! Sorry that it's been a few days since we've been on. We've been kind of busy. We've had grandparents over to hang out with us and uncles and yeah. So anyways, but we wanted to get on here today and do a video about bugs and insects. Oh, careful, Michael. Because I know some kids are about to start school. Some of you might have already started school. Michael, you goober. <laughs> He's trying to get me. He's a wild child. We're about to have a picnic outside. Get some lunch, huh? But we wanted to show y'all some of the cool insects that we found around our house. Michael, you can get your glove if you want. Go get your glove. Yeah, don't take mine. So I bet you're wondering why I had the gloves on. That's why. So here is our collection of bugs. Oh, hang on. This little guy's trying to blow away in the wind. Woo, hang on, bear with me. Okay, all right, so we have a butterfly. We have a moth. We have a luna moth. A lot of people have not ever seen a luna moth before, but we see them pretty often at our house. So we wanted to make sure that we shared with y'all. This is a scorpion. Woo, you do not want to get near scorpions. Here is a Katie did. Here is a bald faced hornet. There's a June bug or a fig eater beetle. I'm thinking it's a fig eater beetle and I'll explain why in a minute. And then the last one we have is a cicada. So let's go over the difference between all these little critters, all these little bugs. So the main difference between butterflies and moths, as you can tell, they're a pretty big difference in size. So butterflies are typically bigger and they have really pretty colored patterns on their wings. Don't they have great colors? I love them. Let's flip this guy over. Whoop, here we go. Even the bottom of his wings. Oop, well, there he goes. He's just, sorry, the wind's blowing. <laughs> Lots of pretty colors on him. So, yeah, there we go. The moth is a lot smaller and they have more dull colors. They're usually kind of like gray or brown colors, maybe tan, sometimes a little bit of black in there. Um, but yeah, so those are the main differences. Um, butterflies are also a little more smooth. Moths are a little more furry, a little fuzzy. <laughs> um, let's see, what else? Okay, we have, so the Luna moth, Let's talk about him, because that's such a very different moth. Isn't that cool? So you see the little, he lost one antenna, but he's still got one. Lost a little bit of the wing on him, or a little tail. Let's flip him over. Oh, sorry, there we go. So he's pretty fuzzy. I don't know if you can tell very well in the video. But he's got a fuzzy, fuzzy belly but they are big. So, <clears throat> Luna moths are actually one of the largest moths in North America, and they are only found in North America. Isn't that cool? I didn't know that till today. So, I knew that they were one of the biggest moths, but I didn't know that they were only found around here. Um, let's see, I'm reading my notes. Um, oh, I didn't know this either. Adult Luna moths, they don't eat. So whenever they're caterpillars, they eat and eat and eat all sorts of leaves and stuff, just whatever they can eat, all sorts of plants. And whatever they eat when they're a caterpillar, then they turn into a cocoon. And then when they turn into a butterfly or the luna moth, when they turn into a luna moth, uh, then they don't eat. They just have all that energy from all the food they ate when they were a caterpillar stored up. And that's how they survive as adults. So they don't eat when they're big. Isn't that crazy? I did not know that. Um, let's see, it says, oh, and the leaves that they eat are usually off trees, like hickory trees, um, or walnut trees. Um, let's see, oh, whenever they make a cocoon, when they go from a caterpillar and they build a cocoon, they stay in their cocoon for three weeks, about three weeks. 
and most moths and butterflies actually stay in their cocoon for five to 21 days. So that's right about three weeks. So Luna moths just take their time. <laughs> um, let's see. What else have we got over here? So there's that. Let's go over scorpions. Let's look at that guy again. Woo. They're kind of creepy looking. So you don't want to get near scorpions. If you ever see one, grab your dad or your mom and tell them real quick so they because they might want to smash them. Because scorpions, if they sting you, it hurts so badly. Really, really badly. And sometimes it'll even swell up wherever they sting you at. Yeah, so if they sting you like on the foot, your foot might start swelling up. Yeah, and it hurts really badly. It hurts worse than a wasp sting. I don't know if anyone's ever been stung by a wasp, but that is not comfortable. So if you think that's not comfortable, you definitely don't want to get stung by a scorpion. And scorpions, you can try to avoid them. Um, they love rocks. So we see quite a few at our house. Our cat catches them because cats are immune to scorpion stings. So thank goodness our cat really likes to hunt them. And so I don't have to worry about them as much around here. I just have to keep an eye out for the dead ones so I don't step on them. <laughs> but so they like to hide around rocks. So as you can see behind me, we have plenty of rocks around our area. That's just one little section. We've got rocks all over the place. Um, but just like snakes, you always wanna be careful when you move a rock, there might be a snake or in this case, a scorpion underneath. So be really careful. But that's usually where you'll see them is around rocks. All right, so let's go over Katie Dids. Look at this one. Ooh, the Katie did. So they, you usually hear them before you see them because they make a really loud sound. You'll have to ask your mom or dad to pull it, maybe pull up a video of them making their noise on, on their phone or something um, so you can hear them because it, it is a pretty cool sound. Not after a really long time of hearing it, then it gets kind of annoying, but, but Katie dids are really cool. They're real pretty. Um, let's see, what does it say about them? Oh, they're also called bush crickets. It says they are primarily nocturnal, which means they mainly come out at night uh, and they blend into leaves and plants. So that's why I said earlier, you'll probably hear them before you see them because they're usually hanging out on a leaf somewhere. Since they're green, they blend right into leaves. Um, it says that they are a type of insect and feed mainly on leaves and sometimes even dead insects. So you might not want them eating your leaves around your house, but it's kind of nice to know that they eat dead insects. It's nice. All right, so this one, let's see. Let's get in on him. That is a bald-faced hornet. They are a lot like yellow jackets. They are a lot like yellow jackets. They're a little bit bigger, it seems like. Um, but also instead of being yellow and black, they're white and black and they have three. Let's see if I can get it on camera. Here we go. Sorry. Bear with me for a minute. So I don't know how well you can see it, but on their back, kind of where their stinger is, they have three white stripes and then their face is all white or mainly. But yeah. So anyways, they're pretty tiny. Um, let's see. Yeah, it says it's not a hornet, even though it's called a hornet. It's more like a yellow jacket. Uh, they eat flies and caterpillars and spiders. So even though they kind of look freaky, it seems like they're kind of handy to have around. Because who doesn't want something that's going to eat a spider? Eat. Um, it says that they're not normally aggressive. But if a human got too close to one of their nests, then they would get pretty aggressive and they would start stinging you and they can sting over and over again. So you definitely don't want to get too close to one of their nests. Um, now, if like a frog or a lizard got too close to their nest, they can actually um, spray venom from their stinger uh, into the eyes of like a frog or a lizard and it can make the frog or lizard go temporarily blind. Isn't that crazy? They have some kind of special venom and so it's yeah anyways apparently it doesn't really do anything to humans but it can make 
amphibians and like a bird or something that can make them go blind if, if it sprays that venom in their eyes. Yeah, didn't know that till today. Okay, let's see, what else? We're almost done. Um, we've got the June bug or the fig eater beetle. So I told you, I think it's a fig eater beetle. Here we go. So there's that guy. So see, he's got a really shiny, like metallic-y color to him. Whoops, sliding around. Yeah, he looks like just a shiny green beetle, doesn't he? So these are actually pretty common. You'll see them pretty often. Now, the June bug and the fig eater beetle, they look just alike. There's, it's really hard to just tell them apart just by looking at them. Um, the main difference is, let's see, the June bugs or June beetles, they usually fly around in July is when you'll see them. But the fig eater beetles, they'll come out usually in August or September. And so that's why I'm saying I think that this one is a fig eater beetle just because we're getting more towards September. We're in August already, getting more towards September. So I'd say it's probably a fig eater beetle. Uh, which I would rather have around anyway, because fig eater beetles mainly eat fruit. While as the June bug or the June beetle, they eat flowers, plants, fruits, veggies. Yeah, so you would rather have a fig eater beetle than a June beetle around your house, it sounds like. So, but other than that, they look alike. All right, now we're on to, whoops. Now we're on to the cicada. Ooh. So cicadas, they, just like the Katie did, make really loud noises. They are super, super loud. I think that they're probably louder than a Katie did. I'm not sure. You can make your own opinion on that, but that's what they look like. So let's see if I put them on the paper, if you can see his eyes a little bit better. So their eyes are very, very far apart. They're on the side of his head. I don't know if you can see that very well. But yeah, his eyes are more on the side. They're very prominent and they're very wide apart. So let's see if I have any other fun facts about them. Cicadas are a type of insect. Um, most of them are active during the day. I didn't know that because I normally see them at night. But apparently early in the morning, at dawn or late in the evening at dusk. Uh, that's whenever you'll hear them the most, but apparently they're actually more active during the day. I did not know that. Y'all might've already known that because y'all are pretty smart, but I didn't know that. So anyways, all right, Michael, come over here. Watch out for the bugs. <laughs> so we are about to have our picnic, but we are signing off for now. I hope y'all enjoyed our video of our bugs that we caught. Michael, was it fun getting all those bugs? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a yeah, yeah, yeah. You catch a butterfly one day. One day. Yeah, one day I'll probably catch a butterfly. This time, Artemis, our cat. That's our cat's name, Artemis. She is a, get your finger out of your nose. Yep, yep, yep. She is the one that caught most of these little insects for us. She likes to hunt. Get your finger out of your nose. Yeah, don't teach kids that. Tell the kids, say, don't pick your nose. All right, can, can you tell everyone bye? Come over here. Bye. You got to come say it to the camera. Bye. Say, see you later. Say, <laughs> see you later. Have a good day, everybody. <laughs> Have a good day, everybody. Perfect. Bye, guys.